Hi, I'm Rhonda Buss and I'm going to walk you through the process of making the Clara dress by Sew Liberated. When you begin to work on your Clara dress, there are a few things to think about. First of all, as you can see, I've already cut out my dress because my dress is finished, but when you have the pattern pieces, you can see that there's no differentiation that's been made between the grading. I actually thought, no problem. I've got experience. I'll cut it without an issue. But if you see here, there's a couple little places where I had an issue. So I thought if I have an issue, other people are going to have an issue. And the way I decided that was best to get around it was to take a few minutes, decide which line was my line for my size, and I just dotted it all around. That kept me on the right size that I needed. It only takes a few minutes. I know there's quite a few pattern pieces, but it's well worth the extra time just so you don't end up cutting into the garment and on a size that you don't want. Now, for this, there's very little fitting in this dress. The skirt is very full, so it's, it's easy to fit. The bodice is not a tight-fitting bodice, but it does have a waistline seam. So this is something that you need to think about. You should measure from your neckline to your waist on yourself to find out what that measurement is. And it's always best to, to measure right from the side of your neck down to your waist. Then take your pattern and compare that. I tend to be just a little bit long-waisted, so I added a half inch to my bodice. And as you can see from my bodice pattern, it I didn't slash and spread, all I did was I just left a little bit extra on the bottom and that compensated for the extra half inch that I needed. For the skirt, what you can do to determine if the skirt length is what you would like, measure from the waist to your desired length and then compare that with the skirt. I'm five foot six and the skirt was going to be above my knee and I just didn't feel comfortable with that. So I decided that I'd like my skirt to be at least right at my knee, about mid-knee length. And I added three inches to the bottom of my skirt. Now, what I did is I just drew it on the fabric. You can see that this is not how I cut the bottom of my skirt. It was, it was evenly spaced along the bottom. Of course, you have to make sure you do it to all and make a mental note when you're cutting it that you don't come up here and start cutting the bottom of the skirt because then it'll be too short. The skirt actually has two side panels in the front, a center panel, and in the back it has a center panel as well as two side panels. The center panel for the front and the back are exactly the same. When I was cutting my piece for the demonstration garment, I actually made a little bit of a mistake. I didn't have that much fabric and I thought I had enough, but as you can see, I have two coordinating fabrics. When I started to put the skirt together, I realized that I only had one center panel, so it either meant that I would have an open front or an open back, or I had to figure out a way to make it work. So it was either cut a whole new dress or find something that coordinated so that's what I did. So there's always a way around everything and like Tim Gunn always says, make it work and that's exactly what I did. There's usually a way to fix most mistakes. So if you keep those things in mind when you're putting the skirt together, the length of the skirt, the length of the bodice, and making sure that you have two center panels, one for the front and one for the back, you'll be in great shape. Mm -hmm.